Welcome. My name is Ralph Leeds. I'm chairman of the Greater Jacksonville Onslow Chamber of Commerce's <laughs> Governmental Affairs Committee. And on behalf of the Chamber's Governmental Affairs Committee, I'd like to thank you for joining us for our Forum Onslow. The Governmental Affairs Committee works with governmental agencies on issues that affect our business community. We monitor legislative issues that impact local business. We provoke partnerships between business, government, military, and education. And we use these forums to create awareness on the topics that are important to our entire community. That's why our corporate sponsor, Duke Energy, has partnered with the Chamber on these forums for many years. They believe that a well-informed constituency is the key to our democratic way of life. Ms. Millie Chalk, Duke Energy District Manager for Government and Community Relations, and a member of our Chamber's Board of Directors, will speak momentarily to discuss Duke Energy's thanks to the candidates and the citizens at the forum. I would also like to thank our media sponsor, The Daily News, the City of Jacksonville for the use of their facilities, and especially the City of Jacksonville Media Services for broadcasting this very important forum. And with that, we've got a word from our sponsor. Good afternoon. My name is Millie Chalk, and on behalf of Duke Energy, welcome to Forum Onslow. Duke Energy is proud to partner with the Jacksonville Onslow Chamber of Commerce in sponsoring this forum focused on candidates running for Onslow County Commissioner. In this turbulent and uncertain world that we live in, we recognize voting is a privilege, and being an informed voter is a responsibility. I look forward to information that's being shared by our candidates today, and um, let's hear what they have to say. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. My name is Jason Harris. I'm a practicing attorney with Roundtree Losey. I have the pleasure of serving the public in my capacity as an attorney practicing in and around Onslow County for about the past 15 years. Now, it's my honor to serve as your moderator for this edition of Forum Onslow, a program of the Governmental Affairs Committee of the Jacksonville Onslow Chamber of Commerce. Many thanks again to our forum sponsors, Duke Energy and The Daily News. Our forum participants for this forum are competing for your vote for County Board of Commissioners. While organized by the Chamber, this forum is the People's Forum, designed for you based on input from you. I encourage all of our viewers to take seriously their constitutional right to vote, and also, particularly as we are here in Onslow County, home of Camp Lejeune, I extend thanks to our service members for their protection of that important right to vote. We will meet the candidates shortly, but first, a note on the format. Our forum will consist of a series of questions and answers. The public was provided with an opportunity to propose some questions, and I have considered those in preparing for this event. I will ask a question. Each and every candidate will get a chance to respond for up to one minute. This is a forum, not a debate, so your answers should be addressed to the public, not to each other, please. Time is critical. When you see the red light and hear a buzzer, your, ta your time is up. Finish your sentence, and I know this is tough coming from an attorney, but please stop talking. <laughs> Otherwise, Mr. Leeds will give you a new introduction to stop and frisk at the Forum Onslow. Um, each candidate has two rebuttal cards. If any would like a chance to rebut or make a further statement, that candidate is welcome to present your card, and you'll be given up to another one minute on the topic. Finally, each candidate at the very end will be given an opportunity to make a two-minute closing statement so long as time permits. Those are the ground rules, and without further delay, shall we get to it? Let's do it. Our first question this evening is going to be for Mr. Bennett. We'll start with you. Please introduce yourself, tell us about your background and experience, and tell the audience why you think they should vote for you. Thank you. My name is Royce Bennett, and uh, I appreciate you all being here. Um, thank you for uh, for coming, and thank you, Jason and Chamber of Commerce, for for putting this on. Um, I've been in business for in Onslow County for over 20 years, and in my uh, business at the uh, Christian Bookstore, and and uh, for 10 years, and then in real estate, I've uh, I've dealt with many different people in Onslow County. I've met a lot of people here. I uh, I've dealt with uh, different groups and uh, community organizations. I've uh, been on the Board of Realtors and the uh, Salvation Army Board, 
And uh, I, I see in Onslow County, we need, uh, that I believe that we need to have more communication and cooperation between many of the diverse groups that are in Onslow County. And I think with my background and experience, I can bring some more of that to the Onslow County Board of Commissioners. So uh, thank you for letting me be here tonight, and I look forward to talking some more. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. Mr. Bright. Thank you, uh, Jason. Um, I'm Jack Bright. I'm a current county commissioner. I've uh, been a county commissioner now for nine years. I uh, started uh, here in Oslo County, born and raised here. My family's from here. My grandparents are from here. My great-grandparents are from here, and my great-great-grandparents are from here. So I'm pretty much entrenched with Oslo County. I'm a physical conservative. Um, never voted for a property tax increase in the history of the nine years. Got on the police department in 1970 and retired. Uh, started walking and pounding the concrete out here as a trooper and then retired as deputy chief of police for after 30 years of service. Got elected on the first time I ran for county commissioner. Uh, always available to the public. Looking forward to serving another four years if the people choose to let me serve. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bright. Mr. Buchanan, if you'll introduce yourself, please. Thank you, Paul Buchanan. I live in Swansboro, North Carolina. Uh, I've been living in Onslow County for 53 years. I was a young Marine when I came here at the age of 17. I've been a county commissioner for the last 12 years. I've been the chair and vice chair of the Onslow County Board of Commissioners. We've established quite a bit of stuff in the last eight years with the commissioners that are sitting <clears throat> as of today, which we're going to lose three of them, probably more than likely, with new commissioners coming on in December. It has been an honor for me to represent the people of Onslow County like Jack. I've been very fortunate. I was a deputy sheriff for Onslow County. I was a Jacksonville police officer for the city of Jacksonville. I work for the state of North Carolina Police Academy. I run a police academy at the college. I've been doing that on and off now for like 23 or 24 years. I'm still a reserve police officer with Jacksonville. I hold two Purple Hearts. One is a Vietnam veteran, and I hold one as a deputy sheriff at Onslow County. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Knapp? My name is Robin Knapp. Um, Onslow County has been my home since 1990. Uh, I came here with NCIS, fell in love with the county, and decided to retire here. Spent 29 years in U.S. government, 25 of those years as a special agent with NCIS, four years as a former Air Force officer. Um, I fell in love again, like I said, with Onslow County, decided to retire here. My mother's buried here. My father has moved here and lives here in uh, Jacksonville as well. Um, I'm a fiscal conservative, as Jack mentioned. Uh, we share the same viewpoints. Um, I decided to, to uh, put my money where my mouth is, so to speak, and step forward to run for county commissioner because I believe in change, and I also believe in transparency and open communication between the public and the commissioners, and I think that's something that's lacking. And I think I bring a lot of experience to the table, especially from the law enforcement side, from the government side, with my degree in uh, government affairs, and um, I'm extremely excited and uh, ready to work for the, count uh, the citizens of Oswald County. Thank you very much. Mr. Price, if you'll introduce yourself, please. I'm Mark Price. I'm a recently retired uh, social studies teacher <coughs> uh, Southwest High School, uh, 30 years of service, 28 of those in Onslow County at Southwest. I also was a football coach and a, a fellowship of Christian athletes, a uh, huddle coach there as well. Uh, I became involved in, uh, more directly involved in politics or, or into what's going on in the community through uh, the precincts, you know, and got involved there and got interested, you know, ideas and policy. That's, that's kind of what fired me up, it got me interested in the process. And instead of just talking about things, you know, we tried to get things done through the precincts. We tried to propose resolutions and things like that to impact change. And so that, that kind of lit my fire you know, and got me wanting to be involved and uh, being a part of solutions. And so that's why I chose to run to, as a seat on the Board of Commissioners. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Price. Mr. Wright, if you'll introduce yourself as well to our audience. Yes, <clears throat> I'm Ernie Wright. Uh, I am a, a resident. I've been living here since uh, 1979. Married for 37 years to Marsha Wright. I've got two kids who went to Jacksonville, graduated from Jacksonville High School. They both are college graduates. One is an engineer at, uh, at the state of Washington. The other is a uh, school teacher, teaches at Southwest Guilford. So I clearly believe in education. I'm a Marine, member of Montfort Point. I, too, am a fiscal conservative. That 
and uh, I'm a Democrat and a fiscal conservative. And uh, I'm also compassionate as well. Uh, I've served state chairman of the North Carolina Criminal Justice Partnership. I've been a guardian ad litem attorney for over 30 years. So I've dealt with our children, abuse, neglect, and dependency. And I, I served as a little league coach. I've done a whole bunch of things. And I was a former county commissioner for eight years. The reason I'm running is because I want to serve Onslow County. Thank you. Thank you. This next question, uh, we're going to start with Mr. Bright. It relates to the office itself. Six of you are running for five seats. Do we have the right number of seats? Should we stagger terms? Why or why not? Would, uh, we, we just uh, voted to, um, with the uh, Board of Commissioners, to increase the board to seven members. And um, that will be on the uh, ballot for coming November. And that includes uh, staggered terms. And the reason for that is so we'd have continuity of the board and we could uh, increase the board size because there are several times in the last maybe a couple of months where there's been people that was uh, commissioners that were out sick or we had death in the family uh, that they couldn't make it. And there was even one meeting that we couldn't even have a meeting because we didn't have a quorum. So I think increasing the board uh, and this coming November and let the people decide <laughs> Once and for all, you know, if the, if the board needs to be increased or not and stagger the terms. Thank you, Mr. Buchanan. Thoughts about the nature of the office? Well, like Jack was saying, when we had to get this on the agenda to, to additional two commissioners and me and Air Williams are sitting here in the front row and I want to thank me and Air because if it was me and Air Jack and myself that got put on the agenda and the three of us voted to uh, send it to the ballot so that it could be a referendum for the citizens of Onslow County. To make that decision in staggered terms is very important to the commissioners. Like you said, we had a meeting one day when we only had two of us to show up, and that was myself and Commissioner Bright. And you have to have a quorum of three, so we could not have a meeting. So with this new going to uh, two more commissioners, if that's what the people want, and then to go to staggered terms, and then we have to look at districting. So that's basically it. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Buchanan. Mr. Knapp, your thoughts about the nature of the office? Uh, how many seats should we have? What's the right number? And should we stagger the terms? Well, first off, I think <clears throat> going to seven members is, is, is central with our, with our uh, uh, county as we're growing. We have such a diversified population here, and we're getting bigger and bigger, and there's no mistaking that. Secondly, I think it's very important that it was put on the referendum. Instead of the county commissioners voting on that, we're allowing the, the uh, citizens to partake in this thought process so the citizens' words will be heard as to whether or not they want seven members. If they say no, they say no. But if they say yes, we push on. As Mr. Buchanan also stated, because we're becoming diverse, we have so many things going on here, I think we also need to look at districting as well to make sure that we have fair representation because this county is big. A lot of people don't understand that. And there's a lot more study that needs to go into it, but I think it would be key for us to do that so that we can ensure that we have fair representation across the county. Thank you. Mr. Price? Uh, the public will get the right to make that decision in November to determine whether or not they want an increase in the number of commissioners from five to seven. The momentum for that uh, began in the Crossroads and Tar Landing precincts. Uh, we drew up a resolution. It was passed. It worked its way up to the uh, county level of the Republican Convention. They passed it for staggered terms, for increasing the number from five to seven. And so um, that was something that was discussed. You know, it was something that people in the precinct were expressing you know, support for. And so we drew up this resolution. It passed. It worked its way through the process. And that was the momentum to push for that. And so, yes, I'm in favor of uh, allowing the public, allowing the voters to decide. You know, let them decide whether or not they want to increase the number of members of the board. Thank you, Mr. Price. Mr. Wright, are these guys right, five to seven? Well, I disagree. Uh, with staggered terms. I agree with uh, having seven members because of the expansion of population. Uh, I believe we need to look into hiring a demographer to uh, look at districts uh, and a hybrid system as the city of Jacksonville has. Uh, five at a district, two at large. Uh, various counties got it. Sampson has a district. Duplin has a district. Other counties have districts uh, near us, and I think this way we can represent each and every uh, facet of our county 
and still have two at large. Uh, so I do believe in seven, but I guess uh, if I would, uh, uh, just to sum it up, I would vote against the present resolution as it is, but as my colleagues have stated, it is up to the people and we will abide by their wishes. Thank you. Mr. Knapp, I note that you have a rebuttal card. Once we go through all the candidates, I'll come right back to you. If I forget, I know you'll yeah, remind me, right? Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Bennett. Thank you. We do have 195,000 residents or so in Nonzo County, and I think that uh, seven representatives for that many people is not, is not too many. Um, I also agree with staggered terms in that uh, it, it provides continuity of our leadership and it doesn't uh, doesn't lend itself to to having the kind of turnover that we're going to have this um, this election. I'm glad that the, the citizens have the opportunity to make that decision and whatever the citizens decide will be OK with me. And if we do pass this resolution, then I think that we need to study um, the possibility and options of, of districting. Interesting. I, I think in that uh, version, we heard some other angles that we haven't heard uh, before. So there's a number of uh, an array of positions by these candidates. So I see a couple of rebuttal cards. We're going to start with Mr. Knapp. Now, the only thing I wanted to say, <clears throat> I, I heard what Mr. Wright said about uh, he disagreed, but I think we, we kind of agree because we agreed on the district. I think Mr. Buchanan said the same thing. Uh, the biggest thing for us was to get that referendum uh, on the ballot to move forward in the direction of, of a seven member uh, county commissioner board. And a lot of us were discussing districting as well, because I think I mentioned the fact that we're a diverse county and I think districting would better represent our county uh, and better represents the citizens. So I just wanted to clarify that, that particular issue if it was misunderstood for any reason, because I'm definitely in favor of districting. Yeah, we do need to hire a demographer uh, to determine the feasibility, but I think we need to step in the right direction towards that. Thank you for the clarification, Mr. Knapp. Mr. Price, I saw a rebuttal card as well. Yes, I wanted to add that I, th I see the at-large as a positive thing because it forces a commissioner to represent the entire county, to know the needs of the various regions of the county, to get outside his comfort zone, to go into those area communities that are perhaps unlike the area where he's from, and to understand what's going on throughout the entire county and represent in all of Onslow County not just stay localized in his in his small little area. And so I see that as a positive thing. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Price. Uh, Mr. Price. Any other rebuttals before we go on to our next question? Mr. Buchanan, this one's coming to you first. It's on the topic of the economy. I think we probably all agree that we want it to continue to grow, right? What do you perceive to be Onslow County's most critical economic stimulator, and what would you do in office to protect and grow it? I think we're already doing that with JOED, our Jacksonville Onslow Economic Development, with their staff and the Committee of 100, which is the JOED today. They're doing so much for the community and for the county, and as you know right now, as of Monday night, we passed another the uh, agenda item for the new Shell building, and the Shell building that's going to be built is not with taxpayers' money. It's money that came out of what we call the Eastern Region, which the Eastern Region, I chair that particular board, which is called the Eastern Alliance. But when the Eastern Region went to Eastern Alliance, the region had $2 million that I brought back to the county, and that money could only be used for economic development. So the JOED, along with the county commissioners, just on Monday night, and millionaires in the, in the room again, we all voted unanimously to move forward with a 30,000-foot square foot building. We get a lot, of, a lot of information comes to us a lot of times about, you know, industry, industry, industry. And we get into a problem with that because of the fact we don't have the roads or the rail. So what we have to do is the small businesses are the ones that we're really looking toward. If we can get industry in, it will be great. But JOED is working hard with small businesses and, and whatever we can do for economic development growth. Thank you. Mr. Knapp, the economy, uh, Onslow County's most critical economic stimulator and what you're going to do to protect and grow it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I, I do believe that we need to, you know, first of all, we need to protect small businesses, obviously. But I think uh, with uh, where we're located, with tourism, uh, trying to get individuals or industries into this area, so that's, I think that's part of the multi-pronged approach. But we have to find ways to attract those businesses in here. And we also have to find a way to keep our kids, keep our children, keep the people here in Onslow County, it within Onslow County. <clears throat> Whether that, mean, that means a different type of education or stimulate our educational process as far as training them for the uh, industry world or whatever. But we need to focus on, on <clears throat> trying to get some of these industries here, making it attractive for them, 
to bring them in here to spend their money. We have to take care of our environment because that attracts a lot of tourism as well as far as like the inlet is concerned and things of that nature. So I think it's a multi-pronged approach. It's something that is very, very important to help stimulate our economic growth within the county. And uh, I look forward to working with the uh, county commissioners, whoever's elected, and if I'm elected, to help promote that. Thank you very much. Mr. Price, the economy. I think one of the uh, two key components <clears throat> of uh, stimulating economic growth is maintaining a, the lowest possible level of uh, property tax rate and uh, you know, to entice business to come to Onslow County as one key thing as ed, in order to provide at the same time provide the essential services the lowest level level or rate of property tax that is necessary and then uh having a top-notch educational system is a key you know, because everybody wants their kids to go to a good school that's that's the key things people ask when they move into a new area what are our schools like you know what are the schools like you know are, uh you know what are their how do they rate you know, as far as in comparison with other districts or whatever. And so that's a, con that's a concern that people have. And so that's a, that's a way of attracting people as well because industry wants to attract, uh, move to areas where they have top uh, education, high level education, and, and people who are gonna be qualified along with the community college plays a role in that as well. Mr. Price, Mr. Wright, the economy here in Onslow County. Yes, I'm a firm believer in utilization of our 700 30 acre industrial park uh, bring to the citizens attention that in 18 years that Burden Park uh, uh, has been open um, We have four businesses that have uh, moved in there Cape Fear precast ABC supply company uh, um, ST Wooten Corp and Excel learning uh, Center uh, we got to do a better job. I know we got a shell building that's cost us about 1.9 million but we have you're 10 minutes from the airport. You have roads, 258, 24. 24 is four-laned all the way to 40, just about. So we have got to improve our infrastructure. We've got to have a long-range vision to attract uh, industry. I agree with some of my colleagues. Education, affordability, uh, but we need to get these businesses in here to help us out with our 67.5% tax rate. Right. Mr. Bennett, the question is regarding Onslow County's economy. What do you perceive to be the most critical economic stimulator, and what would you do to protect and grill it? A big question. There are a lot of things I'd like to talk about. Um, one of the things I'd like to talk about is working with the State Department of Transportation to improve Highway 111. We have a wonderful, fabulous airport out there that has, opera, has uh, 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 room to grow. But until we can get the, get the road improved so we can get uh, industry out there, it's not going to grow the way it could possibly grow. We also have to look at the fishing and tourism industry. We've already started a study um, with North Topsail Beach to, to consider whether, there's a, whether a jetty or a groin or something would, would help the inlet and help our beaches. I was out with... Uh, with the Department of Transportation subcommittee just a few months ago uh, where our representative Phil Shepard brought uh, the Transportation Committee down here to see that what was going on in our inlet. And the only way we can solve these problems is, is to work together with our state and federal representatives and bring people together through cooperation to take care of these big <coughs> issues that we can't handle on our own. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. Mr. Bright, the economy here in Onslow County. Thank you. Uh... I see Senator Harry Brown's in the audience, and uh, congratulations to him and his uh, hard work in getting $5 million brought to Onslow County to put a technical uh, school. We hadn't quite settled the footprint of that building yet, but it's going to happen, and we're looking forward to doing that, and that's going to, I think, increase uh, economic development. We have uh, Economic Development Board. I believe uh, Sheila's here somewhere. She was. Uh, she's uh, part of our economic development team and we've got people that serve on that board that don't cost us a dime that works hard every day to to bring business in to uh, Oslo County and look for business and search for business I've got a, a plan that uh, I would like to see uh, put in place and implemented uh, our commercial properties took a terrible hit this past uh, tax uh, revaluation and we need to look at that to help the people that own businesses uh, get their uh, taxes lowered so that I attract more businesses. Thank you, Mr. Bright. Um, our next question is going to go to Mr. Knapp. 
This concerns the interrelationship between the public and private sectors. What parameters should the county set for providing services that are also available from the private sector? One example might be a shooting range. That's a touchy topic. I think that, you know, I'm in favor of the small businesses, absolutely. And I don't think, as far as my opinion is concerned, that the um, county should even give the perception that they're involved in a in a private enterprise, okay, because that gives the perception to the public that the government is now in control, even though the motives or the reasons for doing it may be essential or good. Um, we should allow the small businesses to compete with each other. I think that's the American way. They should compete with each other as far as pricing, as far as the services they provide. Um, any attempt, in my opinion, uh, of the county government trying to get involved or give the perception that they're getting involved in private enterprises creates a very bad perception problem. It creates the problem that the company, the, uh, there's more government out there and less uh, private businesses, and I don't think that's right, not, not from my viewpoint. So I think that we could possibly work hand in hand, but primarily we should leave it up to the businesses to control and to, to maintain their facilities. Mr. Price, the government and its involvement and interaction with the, pri uh, the private sector. I think the government can encourage and, and recruit those private enterprises to uh, attract that type of, for example, the shooting range you talked about, or if it's the NRA or whatever, that would sponsor that and, and run it on behalf of, uh, of Onslow County and, and grant, you know, try to work together to get that done. But as far as the county government, Say, playing an active role in doing that. I don't see that as a, a role of government to, you know, to compete with private enterprise when there are already gun ranges that exist in the county that provide that service. Uh, you're kind of on a slippery slope that you're moving into something that is not in the realm of what government should be doing. Mr. Wright, what say you? Uh, what I say is public-private partnership is a wave of the future. Uh, I believe that uh, it could assist us in securing uh, industry at the Burden Park. Uh, uh, also, uh, give you an example, a uh, YMCA or something of that nature. But you've got to remember, uh, you have to look at our budget, okay? And 81% of our budget is encumbered, meaning you can't do anything with it. Federal and state have sent down rules. So that leaves 19% of the money that we would have to come forth with to try to partner uh, with a private um, industry. But frankly, we have to do something. We've got kids 16 to 25, the largest set of uh, uh, group in the state. And the best thing they ask is, what do we have to do? We need to look at something to, uh, to help them out. So it's a case-by-case -case basis. Understand. Mr. Bennett? <clears throat> I am all about public-private partnerships. The Shell Building's been mentioned, and that is a wonderful public-private partnership. I think that we have to work together. Let me just give you a real-life scenario here. I was actually working with a company that wanted to bring a shooting range into Onslow County. When they heard that Onslow County was going to, uh, they just heard a rumor that Onslow County was going to start a shooting range, and, and they shut that down immediately. Um, that kind of thing is, uh, is not something that our government needs to be involved in. Um, we don't need to be taking on businesses that, uh, that, we aren't, that aren't necessary for government. And I would be adamantly opposed to Onslow County taking on any business that's going to compete with what a private sector business is already providing to the public. Thank you. Mr. Bright, the question again is what parameters should the county set for providing services that are also available from the private sector? Um, initially, I was um, uh, supportive of the uh, range because of the situation with the um, uh, concealed carry schools that was going on, people shooting <coughs> in their backyard and uh, so forth. But after talking to um, a lot of the surrounding communities and talking to the gun uh, range owners, uh, the two <coughs> private owners, and seeing what it was going to cost, and then uh, dealing with uh, uh, the forestry uh, board board of directors, um, I then decided that I did did not and would not and support that because it did infringe on private enterprise. But I think if we look at maybe a civic center or a facility that would benefit everybody that nobody else could provide, 
and it could be done in a private uh, government partnership, then I would probably support that. Mr. Buchanan? We already have the private public sector working together, to, like Jack said a while ago, to JOED give up $250,000 toward the new shell building, and we have the million something, I can't remember the exact number on that, for the shell building. The range, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about what that's all about. We were not going to build a range. We, it, what happened was the United States, uh, the wildlife, North Carolina wildlife, is going to build a range. They're going to build one in Onslow County. They already have built one several other counties across. They have the money to build a facility. All we were doing was trying to find them some land. That's all it was. And, 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 and like Jack says, the businesses were against us getting involved. We're not getting involved because the state of North Carolina, I should say, NC State, uh, has backed out of that, would not allow us to do it on that property. We have to get special permission to do anything we want on that property that's up in deputy. But the range itself is all about wildlife. Wildlife is going to build a facility. And all we were doing is trying to find a piece of land for that. But we do have governmental and public partnerships. Mr. Bennett, I saw a photo card. Yes, sir. I, I wanted to mention uh, one other thing. There are so many opportunities here in Onslow County. We have so many wonderful nonprofit organizations out there that are looking for opportunities to uh, to build and, and produce things in Onslow County. If we can if we can bring some of those together, we can make some of this stuff happen. A YMCA comes to mind. Um, I'm on the board of the Salvation Army. We've been trying for years to build. I know the Boys and Girls Club need a need a facility. Um, here in Onzo County, uh, we need a YMCA. Uh, these are the kind of things that uh, that none of these individual organizations is is big enough or in a position to provide that. But with the help of the county and a partnership between the county and many of these organizations, I believe we can make some of these things happen. And it's going to be my um, my. Uh, position, if you elect me to serve Onzo County, that I'm going to try my best to bring together these organizations that can make something happen in Onzo County. Let's go on to the next topic, transparency. Uh, Mr. Price, this question is going to uh, go to you first. A buzzword around government has been transparency. Some citizens feel disenfranchised if they don't know about meetings, hearings, how or why something is being done by elected officials, particularly if they don't have a say in that. Should our county commissioners be more transparent than they are now? And if so, how can they do that? Uh, transparency is kind of like a buzzword that you hear a lot from different people today, but it just involves just telling the truth you know, in whatever you do, you know, being who you are and, and uh, being straightforward with people and shooting it to them straight, whatever it is, and uh, letting them know, uh, informing the public, which I think the county does that. They, they inform the public about when meetings are held. They inform the, uh, the public about the ability to speak at meetings. So uh, as far as the background of information about what's going to be talked about at the meetings, that's difficult to disseminate, to get out to folks. You know, and uh, they just have to you know, uh, comment based on what they hear, perhaps, at, at, uh, you know, at different time at the end of the meeting, perhaps, when they have the five-minute ability to comment at the end. And so, uh, you know, yeah, I think uh, the public has a right to know, you know and uh, the truth is what it's all about. Mr. Wright, are we transparent enough? Well, I believe, uh, and I must compliment the current board on being at least uh, uh, making an effort towards transparency. Uh, I believe transparency uh, does mean honesty, uh, but it also means openness. In other words, it means... Uh, for example, in federal discovery laws, uh, being an attorney, I'm sure you can understand this, there's open discovery, meaning you get to get reports, you get to look at everything that the other party has. Uh, and I believe our government needs to do that, with the exception, of course, of uh, closed sessions. But, uh, for example, give you an example, body cameras. A lot of people are saying you shouldn't uh, reveal body cameras. I think the definition of transparency is to see what happened. Now, you may formulate an opinion, but nevertheless, that's trans transparency. That sh let, let people form their own opinion. But I think government needs to be open. That's what the, demo the democratic uh, society is all about. Mr. Bennett, are we transparent enough? I believe that our commissioners try to be transparent. But what I notice is in, in, in being at the meetings and, and watching 
and, and maybe the video cameras affect this a lot, but, but the fact is perception is reality. And I think a lot of the public does not perceive that the commissioners' uh, meetings are open and transparent. And by that, I, what I notice is, uh, you know, so many of the, the um, uh, motions that are made and passed are never discussed. And we know that there was some discussion behind the scenes. Something had to have gone on to, uh, to cause the commissioners to vote the way they did. And uh, by not having any discussion over the matters, it gives the public the perception that things are not open and honest. And I think that if I am elected to the board, then I will try to make sure that there's discussion of the issues that is uh, open to the public so they can see what the background is for our motions. What are your thoughts, Mr. Bright? Uh, well, our meetings are televised. They're televised live. and. They also played over and over on uh, G10, and then you can call them up at any time and on the uh, computer uh, with OnsloCounty.gov and, and look at the videos and look at the meetings. And uh, they're published. Uh, the the agenda is published. Uh, we have a sunshine list that anybody can get on, and uh, all you have to do is call our clerk and get on the sunshine list, and they'll send the agenda out uh, to all of the people that want to look at the agenda, we allow people to come and comment uh, three minutes uh, at the first part of the meeting on any agenda item, and then we allow them to comment or come up and speak uh, five minutes at the end of the meeting on anything that we're concerned about. I have never heard of anything, or I've never heard of anybody saying that our meetings are not transparent. I'd like to... I'd like to see our workshops maybe videoed. We don't do that now because there's a cost factor, and then there's a production factor that we have to pay for that, and that comes whenever we process it. It comes out of taxpayers' pocket. Buchanan, are we transparent enough? Yes, I think we are. I think we do a real good job of that. We get our agenda books on Wednesday, and the general public is allowed to get everything that we have in our agenda books, so we get to see the same thing that the public sees. And we look at the same thing. We look at it all weekend, and then we're ready to go on our meeting on Monday night. So we already know what's in the agenda item. We know how we're going to go with that, each individual. Sometimes we might call each other, but not very, very rarely that's done. It might be unless it's a hot topic and we're talking about it like going to uh, the seven commissioners. We've talked back and forth with each other because we didn't want to put an agenda item on there if we couldn't get it passed. If that makes sense to you, I would hope it would because it takes three of us to pass any type of an agenda item. So that goes out, and our workshops are the same way. They're publicized. Everything that we do is publicized out front. We don't hide anything. Ernie already talked about closed sessions. We can't talk about closed sessions. And usually that's an attorney-client privilege type thing between the commissioners and our attorney. <coughs> Mr. Knapp? One of the things that I'm hearing everybody say, and, I, and I, I, I agree with some of their points, is the one word that we're lacking is communication. I haven't heard that word brought up. Okay, plain and simple. Do I think we're transparent? I think we're transparent to a certain degree. But as a county commissioner, I work for you. The county commissioners work for the, for the citizens. We're here to govern, not rule. We're here to talk with the community, not talk to them, not talk at them, but to talk with the citizens. So I think the big key word here is open communication, getting out and meeting. Like we have town halls that the sheriff's office does. I think that's a great avenue to discuss things and to keep the county citizens in, uh, informed. I think it's essential for a county commissioner to do the same type of forum so that the county commissioner can understand a particular part of the county, what their needs are, what their concerns on, or concerns are. County commissioner needs to talk with citizens, okay? And I think we need to do a lot more of doing that and listen to what certain citizens say in certain parts of the county to get a better feel as to what direction to move the county into so that they can understand the, all the issues and not just some of the issues. Mr. Bright wanted to rebut. Yes, uh, real quickly, um, when we get an agenda package um, and we don't discuss items that come up on the board, if I've got questions about my agenda, I call the department head that's put that agenda item on the, on the agenda, and I find out all the information I need from the department head. And I'm assuming the other commissioners do the same thing. Uh, maybe sometimes uh, we don't agree and <laughs> we don't talk about a lot of things because I don't vote, I don't go along to get along. I don't vote to go along to get along. So anyway, 
those items I know about how I'm going to vote before I walk in that meeting most of the time. And but I'm look, I'm open for discussion. Mr. Buchanan, or another rebuttal. Yes, sir. Like Jack saying the thing we get into sometimes if we see an agenda item and we have talked to department heads, sometimes we remove it. We might go to into a meeting and say three commissioners can remove something from the agenda item. And sometimes it's controversial that we need more discussion on it, maybe a workshop on it. <coughs> so we'll pull that item from the agenda item. And we do that once in a while. All right. Shall we drive on to the next topic? I believe this one is yours, Mr. Wright. We'll give you a law-oriented question. I promise it's not Trivia 101, though. Um, the county law department was recently, as I understand it, essentially cut. Where should this county go for help, and does it matter if the legal help comes from within the county or from someone with subject matter expertise in municipal law, although the lawyer may or, or their firm may come from outside of the county? I believe that uh, the cutting of the legal department, which is part of budgetary cut, saved the county about $650,000. Uh, a lot of that, too, surprisingly, uh, from the legal department's being farmed out. So I don't understand how you're hiring someone and they're farming stuff out to these major firms in Raleigh and things of that nature. So I was glad to see that cut. I believe that we need to put a bid process up. I believe that we need to hire from local uh, attorneys because I believe we have a wealth of knowledge in municipal law and things of that nature. I was in favor, and I'm glad the commissioners waited for the new board to decide who they're going to establish attorney-client privilege with for the next four years and not vote anybody in prior to the election taking place. So I think that we need to hire local. Uh, I think uh, it's a bid process, and uh, that's my answer. What do you say, Mr. Bennett? I say I don't think Mr. Wright said anything I can disagree with. I, I totally agree that it was the right move to eliminate the, uh, the legal department. I totally agree that there's the wealth of uh, legal, legal uh, expertise in, in Onslow County, and we can have somebody from Onslow County to represent us. And I look forward to a new um, uh, request for proposal and interviews with, uh, with the local attorneys sometime in December. Oh, there was almost 30 seconds left. I'm surprised we didn't get a lawyer joke in there. <laughs> uh, Mr. Thank Bright, you. the legal department. We, we did. We, we uh, put out a package uh, when we decided to defund the, uh, the in-house legal department, and it was uh, right around $650,000 a year. And um, anybody could have picked up the phone and called an attorney and say, hey, hey, can you handle this case or can you handle that case? It was all being farmed out, and it was costing us. So we had actually two two uh, attorneys there, but neither one of those people, one was not allowed to do anything, and one just didn't do anything. They farmed it out. <laughs> but uh, we, we've had uh, contract attorneys before uh, several times, and it was costing us around anywhere from 125000 to $200,000 a year. And um, I'm, I want somebody local. We're looking at somebody local. That's my that's my bid, and we're going to try to do it with this next board coming on and let the new board, whoever that's whoever that is, have a chance at picking the person. But we only had five firms, and only two of them were from Jacksonville. Thank you, Mr. Bright. Uh, Mr. Buchanan, Shakespeare had a lot to say about lawyers. What do you have to say? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's pretty easy. It's I'm in concurrence with the rest of the board members that have already spoke on it. The, the key thing is is that we did spend $650,000 and we had to do away with that. So we rifted that whole division. But we did do, we had five individuals that had put in. And like Jack said, him and I sat on the same interview board and we selected the same people. They were local. They were local individuals. And do they have to have all that government background? I don't think so. I think as long as they know, because I can tell you by the individual I interviewed with Jack along with myself, any attorney that will give you an answer like that over the phone is not a good attorney. He needs to go research that situation to find out is it correct and can we do it? Is it legal for the Board of Commissioners to do it? So I think that's what it tends to be. And this individual that I interviewed along with Jack, I'm going to use Jack because we both sat on the same interview, his answers to us were what I was looking for in an attorney. And it was a local attorney firm that I felt could do a good job for this county. So I want to keep it in-house in Onslow County. Uh, Mr. Knapp, I once had a law professor say that if it's easy, you're doing it wrong. How are we doing? I think we're doing it right. <laughs> I mean, 
Um, I, I mean, I agree with everything that's being said here. I've, I've discussed things with uh, uh, some of the members here, some of the candidates, and I think that we should look in-house. We have a wealth of talent as far as attorneys are concerned here. Um, and having dealt with attorneys uh, throughout my law enforcement career, um, some of these individuals that, you know, that I've dealt with, defense counsels and people that hire these other people, they, they charge, a, a, uh, charge a high price um, for information or for legal services that can be easily provided here locally by somebody that's, that has the same level of talent, same level of education for a, less, for a cheaper price. And I think that, you know, when we start uh, outsourcing, I think it does injustice to the uh, lawyers that are here that are working hard for this county. Because, number one, they have a vested interest in this county. Okay, their heart's in it. They're dedicated to this county. And this is where they grew up, a lot of them, and, and this is where they lived. And I think it's essential that we tap into that resource and keep it homegrown if possible uh, because a lot of these individuals here are brilliant. And, uh, and it's, it's pretty obvious when you look around this town and see some of the attorneys here. Mr. Price, the legal department. I agree with the change that the uh, current board made with the legal department that uh, you should look to hire someone in Onslow County that can... Uh, address the different issues instead of looking to someone else to uh, farm that out to someone else. You know, that if they can handle every aspect of uh, the needs of the board, then it should be someone locally. And you know, to keep that tax money, or keep that money in Onslow County, be spent here in Onslow County. Plus, you wouldn't be charged every time they cranked up the car to come down here or whatever it would be. A near consensus on lawyers, if only lawyers could reach a consensus, right? <laughs> uh, still with the hiring topic, let's go back and uh, kick this one off with Mr. Bennett. We've seen turnover in leadership at Coastal Carolina Community College, the hospital authority, and the county manager position. How should the county make key hires? For instance, should they be hired from within exclusively, given internal preferences or priority, or should a full advertising hiring campaign be launched to find the best candidate? How can the public be assured that the process is, here's the word again, transparent? I've always liked hiring in, in house. Um, if you have somebody who is qualified and capable, um, I, I like to see them have an opportunity. Um, I think that as far as the county manager goes, we're going to have to, um, we're going to have to look at what, uh, what in-house candidates we have and uh, decide whether they are something that we can, that we can stay with or we're, if we're going to have to go outside. Uh, I think the, well, the only, the only position that you mentioned that the county commissioners hire is the county manager. So um, we've got to be talking about the county manager here. Um, I would like to see um, Mr. Cotton have an opportunity to uh, to see if he he can do the job and uh, if we need to go outside we can do that but we're talking about I mean I think an executive search probably costs thirty forty thousand dollars that if we don't have to spend it we shouldn't mr. bright the hiring process uh, we <clears throat> had uh, Jeff Hudson decided to t uh, leave us and take another job so that left the door open come uh, December the 5th I believe it is that he'll be leaving and uh, I agree with uh, what uh, Mr. Bennett said, and I, I have actually talked to, to Mr. Bennett and Mr. Knapp and um, Mr. Price and Mr. Buchanan. I don't know if I've talked to Ernie about it, but um, if, if we uh, put an interim manager in place uh, as David Cotton, and he's been recommended by, by Jeff that he could handle the job, so we want to walk around and kick his tires and see how he's going to do. and let the new board get a chance to work with him if, if they choose to do so. If not, there's a interim, uh, there's an agency that brings an interim manager in that you can put in place uh, in order to, to determine who you want to serve. But I'm all for uh, giving the opportunity to the people that live and work here, pay taxes here, and got their family here. Thank you. Mr. Buchanan, how about the hiring process? I'd like to see it in-house. Uh, and, and the reason I say that is Jack and I come from the police department. We never seen anybody get promoted to the chief of police in-house. It was always outside. They, they spent a lot of money doing interviews to bring them in. The college is finally doing that in-house. Uh, Dr. Lingle is going to retire. David Heavily, who's the executive vice president, will take over. So that's in-house moving up. And the board of trustees at the college 
all agreed to do that. So I think that's a good thing to go in-house. David Cotton, I think, will do us a good job. He's in-house. He's a deputy county manager. Why not move him up, give him a chance, like Mr. Bennett said. If he can do the job, then why should we spend all that money to go outside and source? Mr. Knapp, keep him in the ranks. Or I, I'm sorry, Mr. Buchanan, did I give you adequate time? Plenty yes, of time. Thank okay, you. great. Mr. Knapp, your thoughts on uh, should we file up the ranks, hire from the outside? How are we doing? I think uh, I agree with everybody here and, and the opinions that they voice. I think, you know, first off, I'm, I'm sorry to see Jeff Hudson leave. I really am. Um, if elected, I was looking forward to working with him and learning from him. Um, so we we're left with the situation. And I think that David Cotton, I've met him several times, spoke with him. Uh, he's worked hard where he's at. And I think we should stay within within our own house. Again, it goes back to even with the attorneys, you know, we have somebody that's qualified and that works hard and that live here in this county. You know, they're gonna. I think they're gonna work harder. They're gonna be more dedicated to the cause and as to what they're doing. So, w without question, you know, I think as uh, Jack Jack stated, I thought that was pretty good. You know, walk around him, kick the tires a little bit, and let give him the opportunity. Um, I'm sure he can do a capable job, and, it, and if he does, I think it's gonna be great for him, for the county. It would save us money. And plus you have an individual that resides here and he's not coming from the outside and already knows the players that are involved. So absolutely, I, I, I think we should stay within, within our own uh, house. Mr. Price, kick the tires on the guy we know <laughs> or look around? Yeah, I, th I think it's important that we give uh, Mr. Cotton the opportunity if he's chosen as the interim to uh, see if he can fulfill the job and you know, the, uh, has a skill set that's necessary to get that done. And, but uh, if there's an opportunity to interview others, I don't think he would consider that an insult. Uh, if we say, well, you know, uh, let's examine and look at uh, you know, others, and, and uh, competition always makes everybody better. And uh, you, know, you have that situation where if you have any inkling to think, well, maybe you know, uh, he's strong in this area, but what about this area? You know, and it gives you an opportunity <coughs> to maybe interview others. That's, that's not necessarily would be an insult to him or any down, you know, any aspersion, casting any aspersions on him. It would mean, hey, we just want to look, I would uh, look into maybe perhaps interviewing others as a way of ensuring that we get the best possible person. Mr. Wright, coach likes competition. What do you think? I like competition too. I think it brings out the best. Uh, in my opinion, uh, we got three areas you talked about, county manager, I believe that uh, 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 Mr. Cotton is a fine gentleman, but I think we, our process, our vetting process needs to be fair and impartial. We just talked about transparency and everything. So if you hire from in-house, where's the transparency? Uh, so I think you need competition. I think eventually he will probably rise above uh, out of all the competitors, but I do believe that you need to open it up. Uh, Coastal Carolina has 12, 12 board member. I think you need to defer to their processes, they know the curriculum, they know what's better, what's best for the college and everything. So whatever their recommendation is. Hospital has 11 members. Likewise, I think you need to, to uh, take them at their word at that. But as far as county manager, uh, I, I really think we need some competition. Thank you. No, seeing no rebuttals, we'll go on to the next topic, sort of shifting it from fourth gear into fifth, development. Onwasa aims to expand sewer services. Some folks within the county fear overcrowding. What are your sense of priorities and issues on development? Should we keep development in check? And if so, how? Should we limit expansion to areas with failing or problematic systems or develop anew to increase the population and job force? Mr. Bright, I believe you're up first on this one. Yeah, well, um, Onwasa, Onslow Water and Sewer Authority, is the people in the driver's seat as far as... Uh, the county's uh, water and sewer. Uh, we have two commissioners that sit on that board with somebody from each municipality and Jacksonville, the town has two members on that board also, but uh, economic development and expanding sewer is not just about adding new homes and, and putting on new development. We've got areas of uh, just like this weather that we have uh, with a lot of rain and like when Floyd came Septic tanks were failing all over the county, and those people needed sewer. They don't. They didn't need a. Uh, uh, they couldn't use their septic tank anymore. And the, where they were at, the house was already built, built, and they didn't have a way to expand the system or 
or redesignate the drain field. So they had to either move out or either build a tremendously expensive uh, mound system or transport that sewer somewhere else. Mr. Buchanan, sewer and development in Onslow County, how are we going to reconcile this? That's a tough one. Uh, Onwas is a standalone. We only have two commissioners on there that can vote for anything that takes place. We get a lot of phone calls from people in uh, Bear Creek and other areas that want sewer. Uh, when will they see sewer? When we ask questions of Onwas, it might be five years down the road. It might even not, never be down the road. Uh, you take uh, White Oak River Road. Uh, we get People call us all the time from there asking us about that. So we have to send them over to Onwas to get those questions answered. Development. We need the sewer in certain areas, definitely need that. Building, are we overbuilding? I feel like that we are. I know there's some developers that get a little bit upset when we say that, but we have a lot of foreclosures in this county, quite a few. There's, and I imagine that Mr. Bennett could tell you about those pretty easily. There's quite a bit of that, but the development is very important for sewer, but it depends on how can we get it to that area and what is the cost. I mean, I agree. That's a that's a tough question, and I've discussed this with um, several small business owners and and um, other citizens regarding sewer. I think I think sewers or the sewage system needs. We need to have the sewage system, but I also think not having it uh, kind of diminishes our, our potential for growth in the economic area because a lot of industries that may want to come here are not going to come here because they don't have any sewage for some of their uh, for some of their businesses, and I think. You know, having the sewage available for them is going to make it a lot easier for the industries and make this place a little more attractive for them to come here and to build in, in Oswald County. Um, you know, I know we have a lot of foreclosures in this county. I know that we have a, a, a lot of uh, things that are going on as far as the foreclosures are concerned. But I think bringing in some of these industries, and again, not businesses, so to speak, but I mean industries that will come in here and utilize our sewage system, if we had one, to, to set roots here, I think it would open up opportunity for jobs as well. And we need to help those individuals who have the failing septic system, uh, not only from a personal standpoint for them, but from an environmental standpoint as well. Mr. Price, what are we going to do about this continued development and the sewer system we have? The uh, growth and expansion obviously will follow the expansion of sewer as, as it goes into new areas. There's going to be greater expansion. And uh, those areas be protected through zoning you know, uh, from commercial intrusion, intrusion into uh, residential areas and that type of thing. Uh, and as far as the overdevelopment, that's something that market forces uh, will ultimately work out. It's not something for a, a board decision to be made. It's uh, the market will uh, eventually work that out over time. Mr. Wright, uh, Mr. Price believes the market will resolve itself. We've heard some comments earlier on uh, how developers play into all this. What do you think? Well, I, I think, as someone said earlier, that ANWASA is a uh, independent agency. We only have two players on that on that board, so I really don't think we can tell ANWASA what what to do, where to go, uh, what to build. Now, I will state that uh, the growth in our county. And a lot of people don't know this, but the Richlands area has grown by 22 percent, Swansboro 16 percent. Uh, those are the two fastest growing areas in our, you know, in our uh, in our county. So we really need to, in my opinion, look at the possibility for sewer in those areas. And I agree with someone that said we need to curb our growth. All I draw your attention to is uh, look at. Um, the Daily News on Wednesday in the foreclosure section. You've got about five or six pages of nothing but foreclosures. So somebody's having problems uh, dealing with all this development. So I think we need to slow down. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Mr. Bennett, you, you I can talk several for a week about this. You specifically. Yeah, I can, yeah, I can right. talk all week about this, but, uh, but it, it all boils down to uh, the, the free market works itself out. And, uh, you know, the, I, I deal with these people every day who are upside down in their mortgages and having trouble, and I, I feel for them. Um, but the fact is the, the building permits are down 90 percent from what they were a few years ago. Uh, there just are not as many houses going up. And uh, all the most of the out of town developers have left. And uh, once once you get back to a, a situation where you only have the local developers who are building, 
then uh, they're not going to overbuild because that's their business. They need to, uh, they have to be able to sell those houses. And as long as there are people there that want to buy them, then who are we to say they can't go out and buy a new house if they want one? Um, the, the market is getting better. It is straightening itself out. And, uh, you know, it all, it's all about time in real estate. All right, let's stay with this topic for just a minute. Mr. Buchanan, when do we say when with respect to development? We can't do anything. We've been asked many times to do a moratorium. Is We cannot do a moratorium. The developer has to police themselves. Uh, I have met with some of them before uh, for lunch and dinner and talked to them, and they said, well, what do we need to do, Paul? And I said, well, you need to police yourselves. Are you, are you able to sell all these houses that you're building? I know some developers have inventory still sitting there and that hasn't sold. As Mr. Bennett says, the market is getting better right now is what they're telling us, and that's what I'm hearing from some of the real estate people. But the key to it is that the police themselves. There's nothing that the commissioners can do. We cannot do a moratorium, and that's one of the things we're asked to do, and we cannot do that. Mr. Knapp, when to say when? I, I agree with uh, Mr. Buchanan, and I, and I do agree with Mr. Bennett. Um, and the market is getting better, but it also goes down, as far as I'm concerned, is that somebody said that, you know, we should try to uh, curb our development. Which, when I hear that, I agree, but it also tells me that we're trying to uh, curb our expansion or our growth in this community. Our, our county is growing. So I think it's, it's important that we start focusing in on bringing industries here to help with that because and we need to look at ways to bring the companies in here, to bring the industries in here that can supply the jobs. Uh, to attract them to come to Oslo County. And it kind of goes hand in hand with, uh, with I, what I discussed earlier about the sewage and things like that, that we can make this more uh, uh, lucrative for some of these industries to come in here. So uh, that's a real tough question because there are people out there that have that um, can't afford their mortgages, and, and, you know, my heart goes out to them for that. Um, but, again, as Mr. Buchanan said, and I agree with him, we, we can't tell them no. Uh, they do have to police themselves. They have to, to look at the economy and look at what they can do as far as the community is concerned. Mr. Price, what's the county's role with respect to this decision about when to say when? I feel like whenever communities begin to uh, put a cap on growth, they gain a, a bad reputation as being opposed to any type of growth. And so that's, that's not a good thing. And so we don't want to be connected to that. And like I said before, I think eventually the market will determine, you know, what's going to happen. And so that the county should just not really try to do anything with that. Mr. Wright? Yes. Uh, well, you really can't regulate uh, developers. Uh, the county uh, doesn't have that, uh, uh, that legal capability. But the problem I have, and it's got to be some way to bring the developers to the table. We've got a lot of Lance Corporals, corporals uh, young people venturing into buying houses that they really can't afford. And then after one year, realizing they can't afford it, they get fo foreclosed on. So is that really a good um, example to set for Onslow County to see all these foreclosures and people that try to buy things that they really can't? So, you know, I have a problem. I understand the quality of life. You want to try to do the best. But at the same time, I really think, you know, you need to take a step back and instead of lining your pockets, take a look at what you're doing to other people. Mr. Bennett, it's sometimes said to be the American dream to own your own home. What does the county do to perhaps slow it down, if anything? I don't think the county does anything to slow it down. The county needs to focus on commercial development. The county needs to, uh, and, and as far as Onwasa, they need to try to get, the, uh, get our sewer lines out to places where uh, there can be some commercial development. As we've, uh, we've looked at before, uh, a, a family of four moving into a house, it, it actually costs the county more than, than, uh, than what the taxes, the property taxes on that, on that house will pay because you have two kids in school that cost us $1,800 a piece and the property taxes on a $150,000 house are probably twelve. dollars Twelve, fourteen hundred dollars a year, so it's actually a net loss for the county. Uh, the, we're not going to stop the development as long as people can get a VA loan that, uh, with no money down, they're going to buy houses, and we can't stop them from doing that. 
but we need to focus on getting that commercial development in here that will actually pay uh, taxes that will support the county. Mr. Bright, you get the last word on this topic. All right. Thank you. I think um, there is a way that you can control growth, uh, not through uh, regulating it, but you can uh, con control growth by your zoning laws. You can uh, require homes to be built on a one-acre lot uh, in the zoning uh, process. Now, if anybody wanted to be so brave to, to uh, support that ordinance, but if the county supported an ordinance and did an ordinance like that, developers just would run to the municipalities and build inside the municipalities probably, and it, wouldn't, it would still be the same thing. But the problem is in, in 2008 and 2006 timeframe, houses were built because we had a bubble. It was $100 a square foot. Now, if I live next door to Royce and I build a house just like his, exactly like his now, I could build that house for $70 a square foot. So Royce would move out of his house and move into mine because it's <laughs> brand new. So that's the problem. That's right. <clears throat> Sounds like there's a party at Mr. Bright's house tonight. <laughs> um, let's switch gears now. I, I believe it's Mr. Knapp's turn uh, on deck here. Let's talk about the schools. How do you feel about increasing flexibility or discretion with the local school boards, uh, letting them, for instance, set their own calendars to do things such as uh, coordinate their annual calendar with the community college to facilitate advanced courses for high school students? perhaps offering uh, some advantages, uh, perhaps not only offer uh, already offered to private and charter schools with respect to their schedules, or uh, dealing with weather days? Well, I think the, uh, well, first of all, let me say this. I, I fully support the teachers. I fully support the school board here at Donaldsville County. My, my son's a teacher as well. I think they're the most underpaid, overworked group of individuals other than law enforcement and first responders that there is. Um, I think it would take close coordination with the county commissioners. It would take close coordination with the, uh, uh, the school board to work uh, jointly. Um, the, the children, our educational uh, system is, is our brain trust. In other words, we have to support these individuals. Now, if you're asking me, do we give the school board total control over everything as far as their, their scheduling and stuff like that, that's something I'd have to look into because... Um, I'd probably want to sit down and talk with them in terms of coordinating their calendar uh, with the county calendar and things of that nature. So that's something that I would definitely have to, to assess and look at. What do you say, Mr. Price? We already have a number of kids who have dual enrollment you know, that go to high school you know, at uh, White Oak or Southwest or Jacksonville or wherever and then go to Coastal in the afternoon or, or in the morning or whatever. And so um, that flexibility is, is kind of already there. We're already working with Coastal. And so uh, that's important uh, that that continue. Uh, I don't think, I don't know if we need to modify that schedule where it syncs with a uh, Coastal schedule or not. If, uh, if that's something where there's a need area, it would something be worth looking at. Uh, but I don't know if it could always be done because you know, the high schools have so many other things that are going on as well, extracurricular uh, activities and, and the things like that. So I'm not sure it could always work. Coach reminds us of extracurricular activities. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> Mr. Wright, uh, uh, discretion to the educators on the calendar in particular. Uh, well, first of all, the Alzo County Public School System is governed by an elected board uh, of education consisting of seven members uh, and in my opinion, uh, we need to coordinate. We need to meet with them. Uh, they are elected officials. They've got a task on their hands. They've got, uh, from what I understand, 20 elementary schools, eight middle schools, seven high schools, and two special learning centers. That's 37, roughly, things that they have to do. So they got their plate full. We need to be supportive of them, meet with them, and find out uh, what exactly, uh, what programs they want to implement, what things they want to do. Uh, but I think uh, they were elected to do the job, and I don't think we need to uh, usurp. We just need to be there to support. So that's my belief. Thank you. Mr. Bennett, how do we get along with the Board of Education in the sandbox? In fact, I recently met with uh, Superintendent Rick Stout the, of the Board of Education and with uh, Dr. Ron Lingle at the, at the college. And I believe in 2017, they're going to start an early, uh, early college program. They're going to take 200 
uh, students out of the high schools and move them into the community college. And that's going to give the, those kids an opportunity to learn in the community college system and get uh, credit that will transfer to a, to a four-year college. They're also working on a career center uh, that would be out in Burton Park. Our, our Board of Education is, is doing a great job. Uh, they're working hard to, uh, to help the county. You know, the Board of Commissioners is responsible for the educational facilities. And by, by taking 200 students out of the high school, it's going to help to, uh, to mitigate the growth in the, in the high school. And uh, with the Career Center, that will take some more students out of the high school. So I think that the Board of Education and the, the uh, Community College are working together now. And uh, I would uh, help them facilitate any way I could to continue to do that. Mr. Bray? We, <clears throat> we have a Board of Education that... Uh, makes all the decisions about the school, the schedule, and we, we fund uh, the schools. We're mandated by law to fund the schools uh, for the facilities and uh, maintenance and uh, upkeep of the buildings. And we also uh, provide a 10% supplement for the teachers. Right now, uh, out of the 67 and a half cent uh, property tax that we collect from the property owners, 33.5 cents of that property tax, 33, 33 cents, over half of the property tax goes to the schools and public education. So there's a big investment with the county commissioners there. We work really good with the school board. We've got a funding formula now that we put in place. Uh, every year it seems like we got a, a sharp increase in the number of students. And we have to, we try to fund those students at the state level or at least on a state level or, or above. Mr. Buchanan, the final word on this topic goes to you. Thank you. We have the best working relationship between the college, the Board of Education, and the commissioners. It's the best it's ever been in eight years, and it gets better every year. We've been working very hard together with them, and like Mr. Bennett said, the college is already going to take place. Dr. Lingle's already met with, Mr. St with uh, Stroud to take care of taking this college thing another step further. But the other thing is the Career Center, and I know that Senator Brown's in the back here. And, Senator Brown has got $5 million that we're going to put. We hope that's where it's going to go. I'm pretty sure it's going to go to Burton Park. But then again, it's like what Mr. Knapp was saying a while ago, we have gas, water, and sewer in the park. The other thing that you get into is you're asking me a while ago about weather days. There's nothing we can do about weather days. The college chooses to do something different than what the Board of Education does. But on holidays, the Board of Education and the college synchronize. With when we talk about uh, Easter break and Thanksgiving break and Christmas break, they all work together. But weather days, I can't agree on how that takes place because I work at a college. All very interesting, but I think I lost you at holidays. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, we've got just a few minutes left, so what I'd like to do at this point is allow each candidate to give a 90-second, that's a minute and a half, closing statement uh, on why you believe you are the right person to earn the county's vote for Board of Commissioners. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we did not get to some questions this evening surrounding the airport, although some folks commented about it. Funding, what priorities you believe there might be. So perhaps you might address those in your uh, closing statement if you would like to. Let's kick it off. I think we uh, left off. It would be Mr. Price's turn. Let's give it to you, sir. Wrap it up for us. First of all, I'd like to thank the Governmental Affairs Committee and the Chamber for sponsoring this event. Uh, uh, one of the things you know, that's important to know is, is the background of who a person is and, and what their values are and, and that type of thing. You know, I'm a Christian conservative. You know, uh, that I have a core belief of what I'm all about, you know, and that's not in doubt. I know who I am. And, but yet, at the same time, I'm always willing to work with anyone. You know, I think it's important to go in with an open mind that a good idea can come from anyone. You know, the ability to work with others is, is a skill that uh, you've got to have. You know, it's, it's vital. And so I've worked in different areas as a football coach. You know, I may not have always gotten what I wanted you know, whenever I, I wanted to run a certain thing. Or, you know, but we made those decisions behind closed doors. And we went forward together. You know, and it was in unity after that. And so... Uh, I think that's vital. I think it's, it's vital to have people from different backgrounds with different ideas who, uh, you know, like we have law enforcement people, we have uh, people with a real estate background, with a law background, whatever, you know, and so, you know, that brings different perspectives. 
and so that's good and uh, is, will uh, serve the county well. And so I ask for your vote and on November 8th, and if not, before and early voting. Thank you. Folks, you've just heard from Republican Mark Price of Jacksonville, uh, who is asking for your vote for Onslow County Board of Commissioners. I now turn it over to Mr. Wright. Yes, I want to say thank you to the Governmental Affairs uh, Committee, as well as the uh, Chamber of Commerce and everybody that attended here. Uh, the reason I'm running, having run before and served eight years uh, for the citizens of Onslow County, is there certain things that I think need to be accomplished. Uh, for example, our veterans' issues, I think we can uh, deal with the homelessness and the substance abuse, as well as the uh, things involving our veterans, the mental aspects of a PTSD. Uh, although we didn't talk about it, I'm in favor of a standalone mental health detox center, county run, uh, with a sliding scale. Uh, and I believe we need to bring that back. Uh, the other thing I didn't talk about was our sales tax, which basically brings in uh, next to property taxes, the most income. Uh, for Commissioner Midget, prior to his, uh, his death, had talked about a blended system. I believe in a per capita system. I believe wherever the money is earned, they need to be the ones to benefit from it, as opposed to ad valorem, which is basically paying for beach houses on sand. Uh, I believe in that Jacksonville should then get the money and distribute it in a blended fashion, which is legal, uh, to the other municipalities. Finally, I do believe in listening to the citizens. Uh, I believe that uh, it's so important. You must have compassion. I didn't mention anything about Eastern Carolina Human Services, but that was the wrong move to make. Please vote right, don't vote wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, you've just heard from the lone Democrat uh, on our uh, uh, panel this evening, Ernie Wright of Jacksonville. We now turn it over to Mr. Bennett. Mr. Harris, I'd like to thank you and the Government Affairs Committee and, and all of the citizens out here who are taking their time to watch this. I think it's time to refocus Onslow County. I think that we can refocus on having an open and honest government to listening to our citizens and what their concerns are, uh, to limiting our government to having a good quality of life, individual property rights, and to reducing our taxes wherever we possibly can. I've uh, spent the last six months um, working hard to prepare myself to serve the citizens of Onzo County. I, I brought this with me. This was our county commissioner candidate course that uh, our, our able county commissioner, our county manager, uh, Mr. Hudson, put on for us. I spent two days uh, learning how to be a, a county commissioner. I spent uh, two days at the budget workshops uh, in, the, in the spring. I've been, uh, I've been to every local municipality in Onslow County, and I've spoken to their leaders. I've spoken to many, many of the county department heads, and um, to uh, anybody that I've had an opportunity to talk to in the last six months to try to learn as much as I possibly can about Onslow County government and find ways that we can work together to cooperate and communicate with all these different organizations and different government bodies to make things happen in Onslow County. I think we have a real opportunity to refocus Onslow County, and uh, we should join me at Biagio's on October the 15th from 11 to 2. We're going to have an all-American hot dog roast, okay? Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Bennett. Um, Mr. Bright, it goes to you. Thank you. Um, thank you for the opportunity from the Chamber of Commerce and the Government Affairs uh, Committee to put this on and give the people that's here thank you all for coming. I'd like to thank my wife and my good friend, Judge Billy Sutton, for being here in support of me tonight. I uh, appreciate you coming. Um, I only voted for one budget in the four years that I've served the last term, and the, the, this last year, um, there were certain things that I wanted to see in the budget, and I told the manager, along with maybe some of the other commissioners, we wanted a budget that would not raise taxes, but we would still continue to do the services that we were uh, supposedly supposed to do and mandated to do. So he actually presented us a budget that cut out $22 million of requests that was in this fiscal year budget, and I voted for that budget. First one I voted for in four years. Uh, been a commissioner for nine years, and like Roy said, still a lot to learn, but 
after nine years, you still don't know it all because there's 28 departments and everybody's got a different uh, perspective on uh, how to do business. And it's, it's good to get out there and learn. And I'm still learning and we've got a lot of projects uh, in place. I'd like to see those come forward. Boat, boat right, boat Jack Bright. From Republican candidate Royce Bennett of Jacksonville, followed by Republican candidate Jack Bright of Hubert. We'll now turn it over to Mr. Buchanan. Thank you, sir. And thank you for being here and thank the chamber and the government affairs for being here. And I have to thank my wife. Um, those, Ernie, I've heard Ernie say it once before and I heard Jack say it. You know, our wives are our backbones. They're the ones that keep us going, keep us moving. Uh, they give us that support that we really need. But the biggest thing that we have is I'm a commissioner. I'm a vice chair of the Board of Commissioners, been a commissioner for 12 years. But in the last eight years, we've seen more growth in Onslow County as far as quality of life for our citizens. A new government complex, which you're going to say, all right, what about taxes? We're not going to raise taxes. Taxes aren't on the, on the view for anything until 2018, unless the new board comes in and says, oh, we're going to raise taxes. I'm not. Uh, not until 2018, because that's the way the budget was set up for the monies that we were dealing with. But the quality of life, the new airport didn't cost the citizens any money. That came from the federal government. We got a lot of our tourism money went out there to assist with the parking lot. That's a beautiful facility. The library that we have down in Sneeds Ferry, beautiful library that we have down there for our children and for the public down in that particular area. We're building a new quality uh, of life building for all of our uh, health people and all of our DSS people in our consolidated building. If you haven't seen it over on College Street, it's a beautiful facility. We have some more things. A new courthouse that's coming forward, that's fixing to come out of the ground shortly. We have the two new schools, Dixon School that we have down in Dixon, Dixon Middle, and then we have the school, the elementary school in Richlands. Those schools were over 80-some years old, and we're building two new schools. So we've done a lot of quality of life for the citizens of Monsoe County, and I would expect your vote, or hope to have your vote, if I could get that starting on the 20th of October. Thank you. You just heard from Republican candidate Paul Buchanan of Swansboro. I'll now turn it over to Mr. Knapp. I'll keep you in line. I want to, I want to thank you guys, the chamber, for um, hosting this for us. Uh, I think it's uh, uh, very educational for not only the candidates but for the public out there as well. But I want to thank my wife, uh, who's been supportive, and I want to thank my campaign manager, Alva Williams, and my assistant campaign manager, Betty Seavey. They've been with me uh, every step of the way. Um, as from the primary, as I said in the primary, my main focus is uh, I want to run for county commissioner. I want to be a county commissioner to help the people. I want to be a, a citizen for the citizens, so to speak. I'm a fiscal conservative. Um, I believe that we need to focus in on the needs uh, of the county and not the wants. You know, if one day if we get to the point where we can focus on the wants, that would be great. But I think we have a lot of issues in the county that we need to focus our attention on. Uh, I agree uh, with some of the things said here today in terms of the mental health facility. We need a standalone 24-hour mental health facility, and we need to focus in on detox center as well. Being a former narcotics agent, you know, we go after the dealers, but you see all the users that are addicted to the, to the uh, narcotics that are on the street, and they have no avenue for treatment. And we need to take care of our own in our own backyard and try to get these people off these uh, uh, narcotics and try to steer them in the right direction and get them the uh, proper treatment that they need. Um, and I also believe in open communication with, with the uh, citizens. You know, I plan on meeting with the citizens, every part of the county, from Nine Mile to Swansboro to Belgrade. I think it's essential that I hear from the citizens exactly what is bothering them, because what's bothering them there may not concern the citizens of Swansboro. And I think it's important to take all of that in and to just to listen and talk with the citizens. So vote for me, please. I don't have a catchy phrase like bright or right. I don't know what rhymes with nap, but please vote for me on Election Day. <laughs> okay. You just heard from Republican candidate Robin uh, Knapp of Jacksonville. I want to thank all of our forum participants this evening. Thank you so much, uh, you candidates. Thank you to our sponsors, Duke Energy and The Daily News. I'm your moderator, Jason Harris, saying thank you, good day, and please go vote. I'm now going to turn it back over to your chamber president, Lorette Legan. Thank you, Jason. And gentlemen... Thank you for being here. Thank you for your willingness to serve, and best of luck to you in the election. Um, as Jason said, we do want to thank our sponsor again, Duke Energy. Also want to thank the team that helped put this together, Ralph Leeds, who is the chair of our Chamber's Governmental Affairs Committee. Our moderator, Jason Harris, did a wonderful job. Thank you. Um, our form Onslow coordinator and the Chamber's Operation Director, Janet Bowen. Our new timekeeper, the Business Services Manager, Lisa Murabito. And then Melissa Maloney and Sabrina 
Thomas working behind the scenes. If you missed any part of this form, just check the listings for G10 for the rebroadcast dates and time. And remember, as everyone said tonight, your vote counts. One-stop voting begins on October the 20th, and it will run through November 5th. And remember, you can one-stop vote at any location that is convenient for you. The Onslow County Board of Elections Office, the Jacksonville Commons Recreation Center, the Swansboro Rotary Building, or the Verona Baptist Church Fellowship Hall. Absentee ballots can be requested online or by the phone at the Board of Elections, but they must be turned in by 5 p.m. on November the 8th, and the voting polls open at 6.30 a.m. November 8th and will close at 7.30 p.m. Thank you again for joining us, and this concludes our forum. Thank you. You got it.